Hello everybody! This is going to be a shorter video, but it's about a topic I find interesting, which is one of the projects I've been working on the last couple of months, and it's actually been why I've been kind of busy. Well, one of the reasons, anyways. As some of you may know, I think I've mentioned it before, I do some work on, like, spacecraft propulsion, mostly to simple things like a peroxide engine for my rockets, and just things like that, nothing too extreme. But I started working on one recently that actually has some interesting prospects to it, and possibly some, like, actual backing. Like, uh, I've been talking to this one company since last year uh, that produces chipsets, like, they're little, like, satellites the size and weight of a saltine cracker. They're, they're very, very tiny. And I was thinking that they could actually be a really good platform to build off of to make a more capable, like, lightweight, cheap spacecraft. So one of the, you know, one of the obvious uh, areas with that is propulsion, because if you can make your uh, tiny satellite, like, move itself, then you can do station keeping and uh, orbit changes and stuff like that. Uh, so I was originally looking at like ion drives, like tiny ion drives, like you can get for CubeSats, but I couldn't really get one small enough uh, for my needs. I was kind of thinking about like a solid iodine one, but again, the power requirements were a bit iffy, even for small ones. But then I started thinking about something much cheaper, much lighter, and much less energy intensive. And that's what I've been working on the last month or two. And that's a naphthalene cold gas thruster. Now, what a naphthalene thruster is, is literally what the name is. It's a thruster that uses the sublimation of naphthalene to push itself. And naphthalene is a waxy solid. It's actually been used as a bug repellent. You may know it as mothballs. That's, that's naphthalene. And the idea is basically you have your little propel uh, your little like propulsion unit, and you have naphthalene in it and a heating element, and you just heat it up to about 60 degrees or so uh, Celsius, mind you, and it starts to outgas and uh, sublimate, and then you direct that through a nozzle, and you have some you know bit of thrust. It isn't a lot of thrust, mind you, and it isn't very fast, but you do get fairly good energy densities out of it because the fuel is solid instead of being a gas or a liquid. And it's also very, very lightweight, because naphthalene doesn't actually weigh that much. So what I've been working on is uh, a very tiny, low-power thruster that uses naphthalene to push a chipset around. And one of, the aim or one of the goals of this is to make a tiny, self-contained spacecraft using a chipset as the main uh, control unit that can actually control itself in orbit uh, by raising and lowering its orbit, uh, positioning itself, and so on. So I'm actually also working on like a very, very tiny, like using these absolutely tiny electric motors to make a reaction wheel system for it. And my goal is to have, by the end of this, a little spacecraft that folds up and can fit within the, like, the volume of a soda can. So it's incredibly tiny, because I want to see if I can ride share it on something in the future. And the smaller and less intrusive it is, the more likely you can talk somebody into a ride share. So it's actually very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to probably do a video of it once I get the, the first thruster finished. I have the actual thrust chamber done, which is a uh, like the part that actually holds the heating element and the naphthalene. But I haven't finished the thrusting, I, I, or like the, the nozzle or the actual uh, heating unit, which would be very easy because it's just going to be basically nichrome wire and nothing else. But um, I'm waiting till that to show up in the mail. So yeah, um, when that's done, I will actually post some stuff, but it's, it's actually, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Because since the um, since it's a low-pressure, low-temperature system, I can use very, very thin materials. And to save weight, what I'm doing is I'm actually making the thrust chambers out of uh, laminated aluminum, like basically foil. Uh, originally, I was going to do three layers, but I've done, I made one with two layers, and it's actually a lot stronger than I thought. So I'm going to experiment with two layers to see if I can save as much weight as possible, because the lighter the thruster is, uh, the more efficient it'll be at pushing around this, this chipset. And one of the ideas this I would like to see this eventually used for is possibly ride-sharing to Venus, along with either Da Vinci Plus or Veritas. Uh, that's an incredible long shot. I doubt it's going to happen. I have kind of contacted um, the Goddard Space Flight Center for some information, but again, that's incredibly unlikely. I'm still going to develop the, the, the vehicle, and, you know, who knows? Uh, I have eight years to see if I can wow somebody. But, yeah, um, 
this might actually go somewhere, which I think is kind of cool. Because like, unlike my other stuff, like the peroxide engine will only be used on like basically high altitude rockets. It won't really. Be, it's not really practical beyond that. And I mean, I have been working on a uh, an induction thruster, but it's better for larger vehicles, and it's not really going anywhere. Uh, anytime soon, but the Napoleon thruster actually has like set goals, uh, set design, and from a cost point point of view, it's actually very practical too. So that's all I want to talk about was this uh, this Napoleon thruster because I think it's really really cool, and I love the idea of using solid fuel like as a sublimation unit, not like to burn it. And uh, yeah, so I we'll probably post more updates on it later. I just wanted to do a quick little rundown here because it's interesting. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and space.